Now I would like to introduce T.P. Hey, Mike, what are you all right? Well, pretty big man, pretty big. What y'all like? Say hey. Hey. I'm pretty big, I need y'all to say I was born like this. I'm pretty big. What a ugly big man. Y'all here? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm part of an organization called Asian Wellness Poets. Before I get into the piece, I'm part of an organization called Asian Wellness Poets. And basically, we go around teaching, uh, uh, well, making everybody aware that AIDS is out there, HIV is out there. So this first piece that I'm going to do is about uh, a, a person that I knew a while back. And her name was Tiffany. And she was uh, also a victim of rape. And she was diagnosed with HIV. It is a true, it is a true story. So uh, y'all enjoy the ride. So there she was. Just like any morning every day of her life, she woke up with tears falling from her eyes, trying her best not to cry. But today, today, she's fed up and she's ready to die. Creeping into her parents' room, grabbing her father's knife, walking outside, standing at about 32 feet high, praying to God that an 18 wheeler would pass by with that knife in her hand, her only plan was to put down in front of that truck was to put that gun in her mouth and blow her brains out. But right now, right now she's standing at the edge of life, hands out, screaming out, Lord, I try to do better, but I just can't keep the pressure, and I know killing myself might be bold, but God, God, I'm ready to come home. I'm ready to go home. And from the depths of my sleep, I heard the cries from the Bible, thinking that my sister was about to put her life to rest just because she can't cast like that. Yeah, I can't cast. <laughs> no, I ain't bound to let that happen. Slipping on my bedroom shoes, walking outside, not knowing what I'm getting myself into, but I'm trying to stay strong. I'm trying to save her life when I can barely save my own. Call me speaking. Then she goes short. You don't understand. I'm only 15 years old. You just don't know how it is for the wicked by the phone call of a clinic understanding that you died. I mean, the whole world is moving ass, but I'm dying slow. And I just took the picture trying to put myself in her position. They were all honestly and true. I wasn't about to try to walk inside of her footsteps because my size 12 and a half is too small to fit inside of her shoes. As she goes, then I'm giving in the tragedy. I mean, I mean, God just has to be mad at me. But you know how it is when we come from? It's kind of hard to believe in a man that you can't see, especially when you've been beat old, shot at, and raped, all by your own daddy. I'm out of trouble. You can be a shark. Her palms are sweating from the nine. She's losing love. The semi truck is parked at the stop sign. She's waiting to jump in front of her. And she confirms, that's right, Daddy. He busts my chair before he even develops. Beginning my demise. And living life every day becomes scary. You know that your old father is undressing with his eyes. Lord, be bracing. Be brain pacing. That's right, Daddy. My flesh and blood. This baby girl. This hard. My world. My life. This game. This pleasure. My pain.
She puts the barrel of the nine on his forehead. Mama's sound asleep. Daddy screams for mercy. I go for a screaming. Baby girl, don't bust. She stopped me in my tracks for one more step. I swear to God, I spoke his butt. Removing the gun from his forehead, placing it to his mouth. Daddy, you were the one that I used to trust. But I see that this world just ain't big enough for the both of us. Removing the gun from his mouth. As he exhales his breath, she puts it to her temple, killing herself. Rest in peace, Tiffany. All right, now, I don't know. We're all the fathers there. Any fathers here today? No daddies here? Okay, make some noise or something. I can't see the light, though. Okay, that doesn't matter. All y'all take care of your kids? No. Did the kids there with you? No. Where your child at? Where your child's wild open and still can't see That we worry so much about protecting our reputation that we just forget who we are. And it's sad. When a man is ready to worry about his status in the hood instead of living up to his manhood, I mean, I just never understood how a strip club would be top priority to a man with two kids and still stand with his parents. Somebody help me understand. When the one night stand become the new male pride? And it's sad how men hide. Behind wardrobes, dreads, and gold grills, like a lesbian scared to come out of the closet just because they are afraid you are going to judge them for who they really are. But even we know that a man's reputation would not even know his character if they met on the streets. Because it's like we misplaced our identity. So busy trying to be somebody that we're not, that we don't even take the time out to get to know ourselves. So we hide behind Oscar Award with a reputation to search of a character that we're not. And then we chase after girls with a low self esteem, because that's the only thing that gives us power. When we really should be searching for queens with power, a lady, a woman, that would stand by our side like God stood by his word because we are confused. So busy trying to tell somebody what not to do, but we believe the Bible. And it hurts. Well, hustling becomes your full time job. What do you tell your son who wants to be like you? I mean, how can you tell him to find another route because of my super happiness ain't this way? I mean, you can't even love your own wife because the love of money took up place. It's not the money in a race with no finish line. Then we have men who spend more time in a jailhouse than they spend in their own home. So we are trying to win a seat on the player's bowl. And then sets all the balls today until we spend more time with somebody else's child than we spend with his own. I mean, somebody help me understand. What are going to tell me that's real men? I'm just saying. We said to talk about keeping it real, but it appears that we got the wrong idea. I mean, just because you can turn in your rocker wear for a pair of overalls that don't make you bad. Especially when you got a child that you got to look after. So we're so quick to grab a quarter key, hit the streets and call that nigga the living. But once you start serving crack cocaine to your old kind, I call that nigga the killer. See, brothers, I ain't trying to bring it down. I'm just trying to get you to understand that just because you're paying child support, that don't mean that you support your child. And then I'm getting sick and tired of a lot of these males claiming to be one of 5,000 role models when they just acting like one of 5,000 models playing roles. See, I'm just trying to get y'all to understand that when your daughter grows up, you can't expect her to search for a real man that she ain't never seen. Your son, you sure can expect him to portray the role of a real man if you don't even know what a real man looks like. So our identity will forever be lost inside of my character as long as we keep looking in the mirror, claiming to be men that we ain't never been.